I myself wasn't sure how I ended up um, down going flying down an ice mountain at those high speeds um, because skeleton is such an unknown sport, especially for someone like me who is coming from Nigeria. And Nigeria is a place where we have no snow, no ice. We never had been to the Winter Olympics. So it was really um, a huge honor to, to be able to break that barrier and make that journey from the sand of triple jump to the ice of the Winter Olympics. Um, of course, that didn't happen overnight. I was a triple jump athlete and triple jump is a sport that, you know, and track is a sport that I grew up playing. I played basketball as well, field hockey, a lot of different sports growing up, but I wasn't ever exposed to a sport like skeleton. Um, so maybe I should just pause there because the first question people usually ask is what is skeleton? So you start off by trying to build as much momentum with the sled as you can. And so you run on ice for about 30 meters. And uh, once you uh, run that distance, then you um, jump onto the sled on your tummy. And by the way, the sled is, is about the size of a large suitcase. So imagine something that's about, if you put your hands out wide, about that wide, um, and it's not covered at all, like you saw. So it, there's nothing that protects you. There's no brakes on this thing. You don't have, you know, any seat belt. It's just you laying on this thing that looks like a tray. Wow. And, um, and then you're just navigating down this track, um, which I tell people to imagine a frozen water slide. Um, so if you imagine a frozen water slide that has lots of twists and turns, um, and 80 miles an hour is pretty fast. Um, in fact, it's faster than people are driving down the highway quite a lot of times. And so with each twist and turn, your heart is just beating faster and faster and your vision is getting blurry because you're going so fast that you can barely see what you're doing. Um, and each run takes about a minute. Uh, to get down the track and the, the track is about a mile long. So imagine just a mile of many twists and turns. And for those 60 seconds, it's just you, the sled and the ice. You can smell the ice. Your face is just inches away from the ice going as fast as you can. And then you finally cross the finish line. It's terrifying and fun at the same time. <laughs> what got me on this path was the fact that a few months before the Olympic Games in 2018, I found out that no African woman um, or Black woman had ever gone to the Olympics in skeleton. And I thought, why not me and why not now? I, I really wanted um, the world to see that it was possible for an African and a Black woman to be able to compete in that sport at the Olympics. And so uh, the only problem was I didn't know much about the sport. My original Olympic dream, which was for me to be at the Olympics doing track and field, um, that's what I had worked for my whole life. Um, I had gone to two Olympic trials in 2004 and 2008, and I really thought that I was going to make the Olympic team doing the triple jump. And unfortunately, I came really close, but didn't quite make the team. And I was really, really disappointed and heartbroken. Um, and so this taught me a big lesson about being tenacious um, and sticking with your goal, even when it doesn't look like um, it's gonna happen. And so in 2008, I learned this lesson when um, I went with my friend who actually made the Olympic team to Beijing, China, where the Olympics was back in 2008. And my friend um, ended up winning a gold medal. And so can you imagine, I had been training for this for many years. I was devastated because I didn't make it. And now I'm sitting in the stands watching my friend live out my dream. It was really heartbreaking. And uh, later that night, I ended up just curled up in a fetal position, sobbing my eyes out because I thought that that was it. Like, what am I going to do? I'd worked so hard for this goal and now I didn't make it. And it felt like that was the end of my path. And I know probably a lot of us in this space, we felt those moments where we have just reached our lowest low and we feel like, you know, that that failure is it and that's going to define us. But I realized in that moment that I had two options. 
one, I could stay curled up forever and just cry my eyes out, which at the time felt very good. Um, but I uh, realized that maybe that wasn't going to be the best option. Or two, uh, the second path, which is the one that I ended up on, is reimagining that dream. I had about 100 days before the Olympics, and I decided that I was just going to try. When I actually started doing the sport of skeleton, it was really scary. I didn't know how or what to do with the sport because no one from my country had ever done the sport before. And so I had to try to figure out a, a way to learn as quickly as possible. So I want to take you to Vancouver, Canada. I don't know if anybody in this room has been to Vancouver, Canada, but it's the site of the 2010 Winter Olympics. And it's one of the skeleton tracks um, that is actually the fastest and perhaps the most dangerous tracks in the world. Typically in skeleton, you're going about 80 miles an hour. At this track, you're going anywhere from 90 to 100 miles an hour. On day three, my third day ever um, doing the sport, where I still didn't know what I was doing, I didn't know how to maneuver this sled, I decided that I needed to go to that track so that I could try to get better and fast track my learning. Um, the challenge though was that that track was very scary and very daunting, but I realized that if I was gonna go after my goal, I was gonna have to do things in a different way. As I was trying to go down for the first couple of times, the sled was just going all over the place. It was a very wild ride. And one time I finally just lost control and spun around and was heading feet first instead of head first down the track. And it was scary. I was praying that I would just survive because at that point I didn't know what to do. Should I stay on my sled? Should I not? I was just holding on for dear life. And somehow the sled ended up just finally just slowing down to a stop. And luckily I was safe. Um, but I learned a very important lesson from that. One is, you know, uh, sometimes you have to push through your biggest fears to get to your goal. Even if it takes going down this track at 100 miles an hour, which is something that I had never done before. So sometimes as we're facing and trying to um, make a new path or accomplish something that hasn't been done before, you have to be really bold about the way that you're going to go about it. And that was a, an important lesson because it helped me push through my fear. Um, and I went on many runs after that without going feet first. Um, and through that, it helped me fast track my learning and eventually get to my goal of qualifying for the Olympic Games. Once you get there, you have to really believe in yourself. And, you know, that's something that I think a lot of us, you know, think is take for granted of course you believe in yourself but no this i what i learned is that you have to proactively believe in yourself because at each phase of your journey doubt is going to creep into your mind and so um, let me take you to pyeongchang korea for this last piece of the journey which is where the olympic games were held when i got to the olympic games i started kind of realizing that everybody that I was competing against seemed so much better. I mean, they had been doing the sport for years and years and years, and I only had been doing the sport for just a few months. Um, and I felt completely out of place in this world. And also because I was making history and I was the first African and Black woman there, nobody looked like me. So I felt very much out of place and started really doubting if I belonged there. And in that moment, I had to tap into this strength that I had learned from over the last few months and realize that, you know what, you might not have all the years of experience, you might look different than everyone else, but you still belong here. You still have things that are gonna help you, you know, on this path. So my years of track and field help me in that moment because I was faster than everyone else. And so I learned in that moment that 
you have to believe in yourself and find those things that you're great at and really focus on those in those moments where you start doubting yourself. After one of my runs, because skeleton is, the skeleton tracks are built on mountains. So you fly down the mountain and then you have to go up, back up the mountain for your next run on a truck. And so athletes go into the truck and um, one, one time I was going um, up on the truck, on the back of the truck, and I was in the truck with um, a Latvian skeleton athlete. And this guy is just not a regular, you know, skeleton athlete, uh, any other skeleton athlete. He is essentially the Michael Jordan of skeleton. Like he is the best there ever was. He has all kinds of track records and he's literally been doing it since he was a child. So he's an amazing athlete. And in that moment, it was a little bit awkward because it was like, we didn't have much in common. We didn't speak the same language. Um, you know, I didn't know him, so we couldn't strike up a conversation. But in that moment is when I realized how important it was for me to be there because I realized that, you know what? He's probably never seen a Nigerian skeleton athlete before. And so I realized that I needed to believe in, in the fact that I belonged and that I was supposed to be there because I was essentially opening the door, not only for myself and for um, you know, every child across the continent of Africa, but everybody who has had that moment where they felt that maybe they didn't belong. And it was important for me to be there, to take up space in that moment and know that I belonged and believe in myself. How I got through it was just every time that I got scared, I thought about all of the people um, that were from my country that would be seeing me compete. And I wanted to really be strong for them. And I felt like if I could push through that fear that I had, that it could show them that it was possible. So even though I was scared, I relied on um, just knowing that somebody out there was watching me and somehow if I was able to push through my fear that that would help them push through maybe a fear that they had. So literally I just would think about, okay, some little girl somewhere is watching me. Let me just push through this. And then I would get through it that way. You know, it's very, um, daunting to be standing on top of the mountain and you're just looking down this this thing and it all you see is ice and you're like am I gonna survive so mm -hmm. I just would take a couple of deep breaths and and talk to myself and say I know I can do this you know I got this and then just close my eyes and pray that I made it down alive <laughs> but what I really found though was that the more I did it, the more comfortable I got. So the first few times were really, really scary. But then the more I did it, each time it got less scary. And so that helped as well. So just push through the hardest, the most scariest part. And then after that, it, it got better. It takes a lot of having to block out um, those thoughts that tell you that you can't. And that's something that I'm continuing to work on now. In the moment, that fear is going to attack you. <laughs> like it's going to be, those thoughts are going to really try to be prevalent. So what I try to do is counter those thoughts with other thoughts um, that tell me it's going to be okay. Um, so in the moment, as the scary thoughts are coming and the panic is setting in and it's telling me, oh, it's scary, oh, it's scary. I just try to focus and just tell myself, I can do this, I can do this. I pray um, before um, I also compete as well and that helps and I just draw strength from that. For every negative thought, I try to replace it with a thought that tells me I can, I'm strong, um, you know, or I, I've practiced this, um, I'm protected. So every thought that tells me I can't, I tried to replace it with a thought that tells me I can and that it will be okay. It was incredible. I was really excited to see how many people rallied around us and were proud of us. 
even people who didn't know what the sport was, um, they didn't know anything about skeleton um, or bobsled, um, but they appreciated the idea that Nigeria was represented in the Winter Olympics for the first time. And they were just really proud of us. And so um, when we landed at the airport, there was a big crowd of people and they were cheering and um, it made me feel really appreciated. And uh, it made me feel good that um, uh, my fellow Nigerians had, had taken the time to come and celebrate us in that way. And they appreciated all of the effort that it took to, to represent them at the Olympics. At the Olympics, I got 20th place. I got dead last. So there were 20 competitors and I got 20th place, but I was forever first. I will forever be the first African and Black woman who's competed in that sport at the Olympics. Sometimes those firsts are more important than the actual first of winning a gold medal. For me, it's all about the character that I feel that it's important to teach um, people to, to have and to develop that character of leadership um, and what it really means to be first. I came up with this because these are the characteristics, these are the traits that it took to get to being first for me. So the F stands for focus. Um, if you have a goal, you must be focused. That is a non-negotiable. Any goal that's worth achieving requires focus. The I in first is for imagination. This is where you have to imagine whatever possibilities for yourself that you want in your life. You can't think with limits. You have to think about what's possible, not what's impossible. How do you imagine all the possibilities in the world that you want to create? The R is for risk taking. You have to push through fears. You have to sometimes get out of your comfort zone and do things that make you a little bit scared and that's okay. Um, but I, I believe that as you take those steps, as you take those risks that are worth taking in life, you will be better because of them. And that's what it takes to be a leader is to be willing to take those risks that can lead to something different, something better. The S is for stamina. We all face obstacles and we so easily give up. But in order to be um, a change maker, in order to be a leader and a trailblazer, you have to have the stamina to keep going even when sometimes those obstacles come, even when you're tired. Um, trust and believe there are many days where I wake up and I don't feel like going to work out <laughs> or I don't feel like you know doing uh, my homework I don't feel like doing certain things but if I've set goals for myself I know that I need to make sure that I, I pursue them and continue to do it that and then the T stands for being tenacious tenacity to me just means that you absolutely refuse to quit. You are so determined that nothing is going to stop you. And that is something that is required if any of us are ever gonna get to our goals, if any of us are going to create change, we must be tenacious. That to me is what being first represents. It's not, a place. It's not a medal. It's about that character. I'd like to leave you with that. Um, those words um, of encouragement to know that those characteristics are within you and it's up to us in terms of how we choose to unleash them and get to the goals that we've set for ourselves. 